Good evening. My name is Tanea Hunter and I'm coming to you live from Detroit, Michigan. I'm the Everyday Mentor, helping to encourage young women. Welcome to Young Ladies Chat. Hopefully you all have been having a great day. You all have been having a great weekend. We are right here. Well, not weekend. We're getting ready to start the weekend. We're right here on Friday Eve, Friday Junior, whatever you want to call it, Friday the prequel, but we are getting ready to look at the weekend. If you're here with me live, please make sure you say hello down in the comment section. And if you're here with me on the replay, please drop a one below. Hello, Alexis. Um, if you uh, would do me a favor and share this uh, video, share young ladies chat with another young lady in your life. But if you know me, you know we're going to go ahead and get started. So I want you to know as a heads up, there will be a young ladies chat every first Thursday every month. I'm sorry, the, the very first Thursday of every month, there'll be a young ladies chat. So I know you're saying, wait, this isn't the first Thursday. So I was having some challenges and some difficulties a couple of weeks ago is the reason why I had to postpone the young ladies chat. So we're here today, but we will pick back up on the first Thursday, which will be August the 6th for the next young ladies chat. And I'll tell you more about that towards the end of the video. So hopefully you all are ready. Hopefully you all have your copies of Dear Young Lady with you because I have mine marked off for the talking points tonight. And again, remember, share this video with another young lady uh, that could use the encouragement, that could just use some more uplifting, and also to let her know that the Everyday Mentor is here and that Dear Young Lady is an option. And I'll give you more details on how to order the book towards the end of the video. So let's go ahead and dive right in. If you've been watching me for any length of time, I don't believe in that. Let's wait till a few more people get in here. I want to appreciate those that are here with me now. So we're not going to take seven to eight minutes <laughs> waiting for people to get on. God bless the ones that do, but I can't do it. So I'm going to jump right in. So if you have your copy of Dear Young Lady with you, we're going to start out with a quote on page 71. And I guess I'll probably need to turn there myself. <laughs> so page 71. And that quote reads, Allow yourself to be a beginner. No one starts off being excellent. Allow yourself to grow and learn. Simply put, have patience with yourself. I know it's easier said than done, but have patience with yourself. We have hyped ourselves up into believing that we have got to knock it out of the park Every single time when we're up to bat, whether we're trying a new recipe, whether we're putting together a new outfit, whether we're trying a different way of putting on makeup, whether we are writing one of our uh, term papers or just whatever it is. Remember, there's always that window for learning. There's always that window of growth. And especially for my younger young ladies 18, 25, even 30, 35, there are some things that you're not going to be excellent in until you get some years up under your belt. It's not a knock at your age. It's not a knock at, you know, where you are in life, but there are some things it just takes years to develop, years to perfect. And then by the time you get to be my age in your forties, you can become a master in certain areas, but give yourself the time to breathe Give yourself the time to grow. Give yourself the grace to say, you know what? I'm still learning. You know what? I'm I'm just getting my feet wet. And y'all know I don't have no problem telling on myself. So I had a promotion back in February. Literally, like the week I started the new position, what was that? The week of the 24th of February. We know three weeks later, we were all sent home having to work. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Like, I, I, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm panicking. And my manager's like, you're good. You're good. Like, you know, we got technology. We'll get everything together. Well, a report that I'm responsible for now in my new role came across the desk. Now she showed me how to do the report, like within that little training phase in that window, but I was not ready to do it on my own. So I had to go into the office and I'm thinking, oh crap, I got to do this by myself because again, I'm thinking I got to be excellent, right? You know, because what I tell you all is not anything I've not had to tell myself. So I'm like at my desk trying to figure it out, trying to get it because I just need to just get this done. And she comes to my desk was like, what? where have you been? Like, what are you doing? And I've been at, been at my desk probably about an hour. And she was like, what are you doing? I said, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do this report. She was like, you don't even know how to do it. 
She said, I've only shown you once. And again, it wasn't that she told me, it was not that she told me I could not come to her. I just figured, I just need to figure this out on my own. She was like, if you don't come to my desk so that we can get this done, so I can show you, so that you can get this, you know, get this um, understood so that when you have to really do it by yourself, you'll know what to do. So what am I saying? Allow yourself to be a beginner. Allow yourself to be able to ask questions. Allow yourself the grace to be able to say, I don't have it all and go ask someone caveat, ask someone, you know, that will help you ask someone, you know, that is in your corner. Don't go to someone that you're not sure about or who someone who already thinks that they're a know-it-all that's full of pride because then they're going to make you feel bad because you don't know how to do what it is that you're trying to do. They won't have the patience to say, Hey, slow this down, do this. Let me show you that. They'll give you that. You don't know how to do that, girl. No, and half the time, they don't know how to do it either, but they just don't want to admit it. But in my closing for that quote, give yourself some grace. Be patient with yourself. It's okay to start out as a beginner. Um, and if you have questions, comments, go ahead and drop them down in the uh, comment section below. So for those of you that do have the book, Dear Young Lady, uh, go ahead and turn to page 25. And like all the quotes, and I, I'll be straight up honest with you all. I read through my own book as well. And I jot down notes to myself, like certain days it's like, yes, Tanea, you do, you do need to remember this. You do need to just, you know, take this quote, make it your own. Remember this quote, because I've not pinned something to you that I cannot use, use myself. So it, I use it. I want you to use it. Pass it on to your friends, to your cousins, your sisters, your co-workers, because it's worthwhile. So we're going to go to page 25 for the quote on page 25. And it reads, can you honestly say that you gave it your best shot? If yes, stand on that fact. If no, try again. Only you can answer that question. So often we give up, we throw in the towel, we say, I'm done. I tried it. It didn't work. Did you? Did you really put all of your effort when you took that class? Did you really take advantage of the study tools that were given to you? Did you take advantage of the tutors? Did you take advantage of people that you knew that had already passed the class? Did you really set aside time to study? Or were you scrolling on social media? Were you hanging out with friends? Were you just being a couch potato? Can you really say that you tried when you started the business? Can you really say that you invested? your money in the business, you invested in training and development and research for yourself. When you um, were in that relationship, did you really try? Did you really put forth your effort? Did you really lay aside pride? Did you really try to hear his point of view when he was bringing up different issues and scenarios? Again, that's only something that you can answer for yourself. And a lot of times, not all the time, a lot of times, sometimes it got too hard. So we just quit. We pulled back. We were like, nope, I, I don't like that. In my stories, I put that, you know, the only way sometimes that, that muscles can get strengthened is if we get that resistance. That's the only way that you build the muscle is a little bit of resistance. So yes, yeah, sometimes things will get hard. Yes, yeah, sometimes things will be challenging, but you still have to try. You still have to go forward because again, if we quit, if we stop, then we're always going to be stuck. We're always going to be in the same place and then complaining this time next year of how we couldn't get for some. And yeah, I'm going here for some. Oh, COVID stopped. It's COVID stopped. I, I couldn't do what I wanted to do. I couldn't have this. Couldn't go here. Couldn't go pivot. Get a new plan. Go back to the drawing board. Go ahead and, and reconstruct, deconstruct, whatever you need to do. COVID isn't an excuse because I've had to pivot. I've had to do I ain't trying to be funny, but did, I straight up thought I was going to have an in-person book launch. But let me show you how God works. Due to COVID, I had to have an online book launch. And I legit sold out of all the books that I was trying to sell that day. I do not believe that if I would have had an in-person event, that I would have sold as many books as I sold versus being online. So pivot. You have. To, I could have sat back and said, well, I can't do what I'm trying to do, so... I'm just going to have these books just sitting here, but I worked it. I talked to people who've done it before. I've got counsel. I got advice. I got 
all these different things because like it or not, for right now, COVID is here. And you are going to have to find a way to push harder, to drive stronger for some of the things that you're trying to accomplish, finishing school, uh, uh, adjusting to working from home or adjusting to half home, half a different uh, going into the office. But only you and you alone can address the fact that if did you really try your hardest? Did you really give it your best effort before you threw in the towel? Are you? giving it your best effort before you decide to just throw it away. And only you can answer that question. Only you can answer that question. I'm going down. Hey, my editor is just hopped on Miss uh, Tanisha Chantilly Johnson. So uh, Tanita, Tanisha, please drop your information uh, in the comments below. Somebody may be ready to author their book. Somebody may be ready for self-publication or they just need some editing, some direction. Please drop your information down in the uh, the bottom. She helped make this possible and I am so thankful. So I'm going to move on to the last quote because I don't want to hold you all all night. <laughs> But what I did was for this last this last one, let me preface this with, I reached out to some of my young ladies and asked them what quotes stood out to them, what quotes meant something to them. And one of my young ladies gave me a slew of them. And I appreciated it. That's the reason, that's one of the reasons why this is part two. So I appreciated it. And she gave me like three actually that kind of all kind of all meant the same thing. So I was like, oh, like we don't even have to uh, stretch, stretch that out. We can just put that all together. So if you'll allow me in the preacher moment, let me tie all three of these together for you. So I'm going to go, for those of you that still have your copy of Dear Young Lady, I'm going to go to quote of the quotes on pages 14, 42, and 46. So the quotes on pages 14, 42, and 46. And what I'm going to do is tie all three of those together because they pretty much all have the same message, just a few different wordings and nuances. So that is page 14, 42, and 46. So the quote on page 14 says, what if you, what if you never get the applause? Will you keep pushing? Keep the end in mind and do not stop until you get there. Page 42. Even if they don't acknowledge you, move forward anyway. Page 46, when those who are seated in the stands criticize you for starting over, remember, they're still seated in the stands. So pretty much what I thought about, just what I thought about when I initially like looked at all three of those together, I thought about the story of Noah in the Bible. Noah's story in the Bible is told between Genesis 6 and 8. But Genesis 5, it tells us that Noah was about 500 years old. And then somewhere in chapter 6, uh, verse 14, actually to be exact, God tells Noah, hey, the, the earth is getting wicked. I'm getting tired of these folks. You build an ark and I'm, you know, because it's getting ready to rain on the earth. 40 days, 40 nights. It had never rained before. And God gave him the, the plans, the blueprints on how to build the ark, what he needed to do, who needed to be in the ark with him and go from there. So Noah gets to build and he builds this ark. And then it does not say until about maybe Genesis 7 that Noah was about 600 years old. So about a hundred years have passed. Noah's had children. Uh, his children have gotten married. They have spouses and things of that nature. It rains on the earth, just like God has said, but Noah and his family and the animals he put in the ark are spared. What am I saying? Noah, it doesn't tell us specifically in the Bible that people were mocking Noah. People were talking about Noah, but imagine this, you're doing something that's never been done before. You're building something that's never been built before in anticipation of something that has never been seen before. And I'm sure people came by, Noah, what are you doing? What are you building? Why are you doing this? In that hundred year period, I'm sure they were laughing. I'm sure they're like, rain, we don't even know what rain is. We don't even know what it means for like it to be flooded. Like, what are you talking about? And they're looking at this ark. They're looking at this big, essential, essentially a boat. They're looking at this big boat like, what are you doing? But then it begins to rain. So young lady, 
You may be doing something in your family that has never been done before. You may be accomplishing and trying to do something that nobody in your family has done. Nobody in your circle is doing, but keep doing it anyway. There are going to be people that will not understand. There are going to be people that will look and say, what are you doing? We've never heard of this. We've never seen this. That's not been done. We don't do this in our family. We haven't had this. We don't see this, but you do it anyway. You do it anyway because God gave you the vision. You see it. It's in your heart. You've dreamt about it. You've written it down. You've felt it in your spirit. And you can't go by what others are saying around you because just like the quote said, Sometimes you won't get the applause. Sometimes you won't get the hand clap. Sometimes you won't get the pat on the back. Sometimes you will even get the people that are sit there in the stands and look at you and critique the work that you're doing. And even though they have no frame of reference of what you're doing, but they still trying to critique. How does that work? But you keep doing what you're doing. You continue to get your degree, even though you may be the first one in your family. You continue to research and do your business plans, even though you may be the first one in the family. You continue to have a solid marriage, even though you may be the first one in your family, because many of us, many of you are doing things that no one in your family has ever done as has not even seen before. So I encourage you. Thank you, Jesus. Didn't mean to preach, not trying to preach, but he knows what needs to be said. But I encourage you to continue to push forward, continue to go and allow God to surround you with those that would help you to pray over the dream, to help you to pray over the vision to help cover and to protect until you fully birth and manifest what it is that he's put in your spirit to produce in the earth because we are meant to produce we are meant to bring forth something each and every one of us there's no such thing as just you know bench riders god has given us each a specific gift a specific talent and those are the things that we need to walk out in the earth and we need to release before he returns and or before we die. So young lady, I say to you, continue. Even though there are people on the sidelines watching, critiquing, saying whatever it is that they want to say, let them talk anyway, because you are doing something that has never been done before that's inspired by God. And I'm going to stop right there because I'm not trying to preach. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, I'm a preacher, but I'm not trying to preach tonight. But young ladies, young ladies, young ladies, again, share this video. I hope that it has been encouraging to you. I hope that you have gained value. There's been some type of insight. Or again, every first Thursday of the month, there will be a young ladies chat. So like I said before, uh, I had to postpone a couple of weeks ago, but we're here tonight on the postponement date, but we will be back on schedule on Thursday, August the 6th at 9 p.m. for Young Ladies Chat in August. And next month, we are going to be talking about mental health. And here is my disclaimer. I am not a mental health professional, but there are some things that I've gone through that I believe would be beneficial for me to share. I truly believe that you do not tell everyone everything, but someone needs to say something about something. And so I'm going to say something about something. So make sure you tune in and grab your sister, have her tune in with you, share the video, share the information as the date approaches. I'll be posting the flyer because we need to take care of our mental health. We need to make sure that we're good, especially during COVID and things are lasting a lot longer than we anticipated. So for those of you that still do not have a copy of my book, Dear Young Lady, and you'd like to purchase a copy, you can purchase it on my website, TaneaNHunter.com. T-A-N-E-Y-A-N hunter.com. Somebody please drop that down in the comment section. And for those of you that are Kindle readers, I got you on that too. Make sure you go to amazon.com. And when you go to the search bar, type in dear young lady, Tanea Hunter, T-A-N-E-Y-A Hunter. I hope that you all have enjoyed Young Ladies Chat. Again, please make sure you tell a friend. Catch us next month, uh, Thursday, August the 6th at 9 p.m. And we will be back for another Young Ladies Chat. You all have a good evening and I'll catch you later.